Hey guys, how's it going? Kermode here. Welcome to the first video in my beginner Ableton course. This course is going to be a full start to finish course where I show you guys everything you need to know about Ableton to get started. Where things are, what things are, how to get sounds, how to get a song out onto the timeline. Now, I'm not going to teach you guys how to make sounds, and I'm not going to tell you how to write songs. That's going to be a whole different course unto itself. But this is just going to be a good way to get started in Ableton and actually just get going and get using the program. Now, before we get started, I've actually included my ultimate beginner Ableton sample pack in the description of this video. This is a sample pack with a bunch of samples that are going to be everything you need to get started writing music, everything from drums to useful melodic sounds. So this will just allow you to take what you learn here and take those sounds and actually get making things in Ableton. So if you don't have any samples or you want more, make sure to go grab those. But now let's get started with our first video. And our first video here is going to be about navigating Ableton and understanding the layout of Ableton, understanding what you're looking at, where things are. So let's just dive into it right here. So first thing I want to bring to your attention up here is actually the main transport in Ableton. This is where you're going to be able to press play, stop, and record on your timeline uh, when you're using Ableton. We're going to go into the exact parameters up here in our next video in terms of what everything does. But up top is where you also have controls over things like your tempo, metronome, uh, count in, things like that. We'll be going into that in more detail. Now, the first actual window I want to bring to your attention is actually going to be one of the most important ones down here in the left corner for a beginner. And if you're not seeing that, you can toggle it open with your arrow here. And this is the info view. And what you'll see is it actually gives you a description of whatever it is you hover your mouse over. The reason I bring this to your attention first as a beginner is there's going to be so many times you get lost in Ableton and maybe you don't remember what I told you and you don't remember what something is. Well, all you have to do is hover your mouse over it to find out. So, for example, if I hover my mouse over here, I can see in the info window that it says that this is the metronome. It tells me what to do with it and it tells me how it works. So this info window is going to be huge for beginners. So I, I recommend opening this and having it open at all times. It's going to be a real game changer. Now, right above that is your browser window right here. And you can expand this window with this little bar line on the left if you're not seeing it as large as mine. And you can expand the middle of it here like that as well. So once you have that expanded to taste, this is where you're going to be able to find samples and find instruments in Ableton. Now, how it's broken up is you have sounds up top where it breaks up the default Ableton library into different categories, things like basses, things like brass, things like strings. And these aren't samples. These aren't like sounds that you drag in and you hear it. These are actually full-blown instruments. And if I click one of them, you can actually preview it. And you can use the arrow keys to preview different instruments. And then you're simply going to click and drag it in for it to be on the timeline here. You can see that it appeared. If I undo that, we were just left with the one default audio track. And if I bring it back in, it appears. So it's as simple as clicking and dragging or actually double clicking as well. We'll create a new track. And that'll bring it in and it'll bring it onto your arrangement view, which we'll go into later. Now, everything works in little drop down menus so you can open them up and see what's in there. And you'll have all these different types. Now, below, they've also categorized drums and they'll do the same thing as well, where you can actually preview different kits. Just scroll down and it gives you little testers for that kit. And if you click and drag it in, your drum kit will actually appear on the timeline. And down here, you'll be able to see the actual kit and the drums. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to delete those, though, and clear things back up to an empty audio track. 
Now below that, you have your instruments in the browser. These instruments are going to be Ableton's instruments that it comes with, but it's not going to have an interesting sound like when you drag in a sound here, which has a what's called a preset. And a preset is these instruments set a certain way, so they sound a certain way. When you bring these in, however, they're going to be quite basic. What you can do is these also have drop down menus. And in these drop down menus, you can see these are categorized as well. And these will bring in these presets, these manipulated versions of the instrument to sound a certain way. So this one's sax. This one's an ocarina. And you can see that the parameters of the instrument adjust. That's what a preset is. There's even things that sound like voices. So those drop-down menus are going to access those. But again, if you don't uh, open up the drop-down menus, you get the rawest, most original version of each of these different types of instruments. Below are the audio effects. This is going to be a whole list of the audio effects inside of Ableton, as well as a drop-down menu with different presets for audio effects as well. Below that, you have MIDI effects. So these are effects that will affect incoming MIDI. MIDI being the note information that triggers an instrument. Uh, we'll go into that later as well. Below you have Max for Live. Max for Live is an open way of programming different types of your own audio effects or instruments in Ableton. You can actually design your own. What's cool though is it actually comes with, when you get Ableton, a bunch of pre-made audio effects instruments and MIDI effects as well. So these are the same as the instruments, audio effects, and MIDI effects here in terms of how they're categorized, but they're completely different ones that came with Ableton. And you can download ones that other people have made online, which is really cool. Now below that you have plugins, and what plugins are are third-party software that works inside of Ableton. So there are different synthesizers by different companies, things like X for Serum or Native Instruments Massive, that will actually work in your program in Ableton by clicking and dragging it in. So just for a quick example, if I drag in Serum, you can see a whole other window opened up inside Ableton. So this is a different instrument made by a different company that works in Ableton. So with Max for Live and plugins, Ableton becomes infinite because you're not just limited to what Ableton comes with. Below that, you have clips, and clips are kind of pre made MIDI or audio examples of different instruments you already have that come with Ableton. So, what I mean by this is if I play this, you get a loop, and if I drag this in, it could either be audio or MIDI. Now MIDI, again we'll go into this, I briefly described it, is just note information. Which is different than audio. Audio, you can't manipulate the same way. Maybe I'll drag in a different clip and see if I can find one that's audio. So you see I'm just dragging in clips here. These are all different pieces of MIDI, which is quite useful. still all MIDI and these ones are all MIDI so it's really up to you to bring in but what they are are essentially the notation building blocks for different musical ideas and so you can check those out and test those out in the clips view here below that are samples and these are just all your samples in one big list now if that seems overwhelming you can organize it up top either by default name, alphabetical order. You can right click it, uh, order it by the type, the rank, so how often you use it, where it is on your computer, I believe the place, date modified, last time you edited the file, so you can organize that. However, a big list like that is still quite overwhelming. Well, this is where the search bar up top here comes in handy because I can look up something like a vocal. At you. Uh and it looks for the word vocal and filters that down for me. 
That's still not organized enough, however, and that's why below the places I find is very important. Now what places are, are essentially folders that you add in here by clicking add folder to organize this library and you can add your desktop you can add a folder on your desktop so you can keep all your other samples audio samples organized to easily bring in and manipulate so for example I've added a samples folder which has all my samples cymatics folder because I used to work at cymatics so I can keep all their samples and everything I was doing there organized um, my own Ableton tools folder, which is my own personal sample bank and uh, different useful things inside of Ableton. And then things like my downloads folder so I can easily access my downloads, my Dropbox, my desktop, uh, clip groups for my live performance, audio work to access my mastering work, splice so I can get samples off of splice. And then they even have user library here, which uh, contains your own presets and samples that you save in Ableton along the way and even the current project now the project is what you're working on currently and have saved so right now this is an untitled project you can see here but if you hit save and you start doing things in your project that will save to this current project folder as well so that's the browser window I know it's kind of a lot but it's really really handy now what's also useful is up top new with Ableton Live 10 is you have a collection section where you can actually color things. You can color sample, you can color instruments, and then when you color them, they will appear in that color. So I just added that base to red. Um, maybe I could make this folder here yellow. Yellow appears here and it, it'll appear up top and organize it. So it's another way of organizing your library beyond just these folders. Super handy. Now, while we're still on the left here, there's one more hidden window, which some of you may or may not be seeing. And it, you access that by clicking these squiggly lines, and that's your groove pool. And what groove pool is, is it's a place where you can make sounds more human by giving them what's called groove. You can give your instruments, your drums, groove, which makes your music less robotic and more swung out and natural feeling. Um, I'm not going to go into it right now, but that's the groove pool. Let's just keep it closed for organization's sake. Now, the most important windows inside of Ableton are what you are seeing here. And it can be one of two things. And this is what makes Ableton so special. It can either be what's known as the arrangement view, where you hear sounds from left to right. This would be your typical DAW, your digital audio workstation. Most other DAWs work this way, with the exception of maybe Bitwig and a couple others. Um, but most of them work from left to right. You hear your song in a linear fashion, and that's the final song you're going to export. And I'll quickly drag in some samples so you can see that. So let's just drag in some kick drum samples. These are the low booming types of drums you hear in music. I'll just drag it across. And when I hit play from our transport up top, also spacebar, you can see that this little slider here moved from left to right. Straightforward. The other view that you may be looking at, which is different than this one here, is what's known as session view. And session view works in a more abstract way, and it works like a painter with uh, their painter's palette testing out ideas. Let me just uh, delete these clips from here. And how it works is you drag in what's known as a clip, and this can be either an audio clip or, as we learned a bit earlier you have MIDI clips and what you could do is you can play them in no particular order so it's kind of this free form way of writing music so I'll drag in several clips from different areas you can see it creates new tracks for them tracks house the clips and house the instruments and let me just play one with this play button here so this one's currently playing on this track 
Now let me trigger this one. Okay, they're both playing. I'm going to stop this one. I'm going to trigger this one. I'm going to quickly solo them. So that's one. That's another. They're playing at the same time. So clips, instead of working left to right, they're just kind of existing in a top-down sort of way. And you hit play to test out an idea. So this is what makes Ableton so creative, is you can test out all these ideas, get all these ideas ready, and then test the order of them without being committed to a specific sequence. Then once you're happy testing these out, you'll be able to create that sequence here because what's actually really interesting is you'll notice these clips, and then I'll click this to toggle between the different views, are the same. So they take it from a horizontal view and make it vertical. That's actually the Ableton logo, which you can see here, horizontal lines and vertical lines. And so these will be able to be toggled between. You can also toggle between it with tab. So I'm going to go into how these different views work in a later video, it's specifically how they interact together, how the clips work, everything like that. But that's what those two views are. They're your final arrangement, which is arrangement view, and session view, where you're testing out ideas. So session view will never be your finalized idea because there's no real way of exporting what's going on here because they're all kind of just existing, if that makes sense. If not, there's more to learn as we go on. So this whole window here is two views. And the view down below here is going to have two views as well. This is going to be also a little confusing. Now, by uh, you can toggle between them by clicking here. And what they are are your clips view. And I'll clip, click a clip. And then I, I believe it's maybe the instrument view or the device view, the device view. And this is where you'll see your instruments and effects on the same track because what you have to understand is these tracks here house two different things they house the devices the the audio effects the instruments and they house the clips that trigger that instrument because if you think of it on this track here let's just look at 707 there's a 707 drum kit but it's not making any sound. The kit, the instrument just exists. The drum kit is just a drum kit, but you need something to trigger that drum kit. Well, that was the clip that we put on here. If I press play on it, these notes, MIDI notes, trigger the drums. So each clip or each track has both clips with musical ideas and devices which create the sounds that those musical ideas are trying to trigger. And you toggle between them, between these different views. So clips will either be MIDI clips or audio clips. You'll see this is not a musical idea. It's actually a piece of audio, a drum on this track here. But then it also contains the devices, which if I click down here, it will toggle between. And the devices are my drum kit and then an effect afterward called a compressor may seem a little overwhelming right now, but we'll go into a little more detail on it in a later video. But again, to reiterate, this view here has two views, the clips and then the devices. You're never going to hear the devices if there aren't clips because you need clips to make the signal go down to your devices. So those are the main views. There's actually not much more to it. If you're missing the clips and devices view, you can toggle it with this arrow in the bottom right corner. So those are the main views. Up top, you have your transport and other settings, play, stop, tempo, kind of your master settings up here. You have your browser window where you grab samples, you grab instruments, you grab devices. This is where you just bring things into Ableton. You have the two different views here, arrangement and session, where you're creating 
musical ideas, either in a free form state or a linear state. And then you have the devices and clips view down below where you edit both your musical ideas and your sounds, your instruments, things like that. And then lastly, and very important for a beginner, the info view here, where you're gonna be able to learn about the things you don't understand in Ableton. What does this button do? Oh, that's the solo slash Q button. So those are all the most important things that we wanna know when navigating Ableton. If anything's missing, look for these arrows, look for this toggle here, and look for this arrow here. There are more hidden windows in Ableton, so yours stay, still might not look exactly like mine. But again, we'll be going into that in future videos. So those are the main views in Ableton. That is the main way of browsing and navigating your Ableton. And there we go. That's video number one. So watch this a couple times, kind of get an understanding of the layout. I know Ableton looks like a bit of a spaceship, but it'll start to make sense as we go through future videos, describing more of what's going on inside of Ableton. So thanks guys, my name's Kermode. This is my beginner Ableton class. I recommend you download the free sample pack in the description of this video so you can start making music after you watch all these videos. So I hope you check out the next video because we've got a lot to learn in this course. Thanks again, guys. My name is Kermode. Peace.